really good. <laughs> I said, I really want to go to Australia. And I ended up rooming with a complete stranger who I'm still, you know, friends with. Um, and, you know, and it was kind of ever after. And then I went to the Vancouver one, like, shortly after, you know, a few months later. Um, but it, it, it is, and I'm still friends, and, and we have gone on other trips together. I've gone to visit her. I've visited her at her home three times. And, um, I'm in a New Orleans crew for Mardi Gras. I'm yeah. crew of Morpheus, and they came to Mardi Gras last year to see my parade. Yes, wow. we did. I actually just went to visit her a few weeks yep. ago. Yeah, hey, it's, it's, I mean, you, you, you're just such a, I mean, you're a bunch of intellectuals. <laughs> all different, lo all different lo walks of Historian. life. Historians. Yeah. Great. Right. People. Yeah. yeah. And I do tell people that I come, I'm coming to a fan club for a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just said I'm going to meet a group of friends, is what I said. Yeah. That's what I said. I tried to explain it to my son's mother in law, where, because I posted a picture of the palm trees, and she said, You went somewhere tropical and didn't invite me? And I was like, How do I say this? A group of friends. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was uh, one of the, uh, as I was leaving the hospital last night, one of the cardiac surgeons was there at Starbucks and just chatting with him. And uh, he said, What are you doing this weekend? Sharon? Um, I was going to say, um, before Highlander, I was a Trekkie. <laughs> so, like, that was my first fandom. And I find. For me, the fan communities were very, very similar because we have the real nitpickers, the people who delve deep into the shows. There was a community. We did a lot of charity work. Um, and my longest friends, my oldest friends, are all Star Trek friends. So the commu fan community was very, very similar, and I find the same thing in the Star Trek fandom I know. But what I don't get in Star Trek, and it's super unique to Highlander, is that the writers and the actors and the producers and fans have the sort of back and forth relationship. And right. as you said, family, which yeah. I have not seen anywhere else, and that's yeah. super unique to Highlander. And, and it, it is also, there's something about particular shows that engender it. I mean, in <coughs> Star Trek, Stargate, uh, and, uh, they, they have that. It, it is about what does it mean to be human? If, mm -hmm. if, you, if you try and distill the essence, if, if you didn't have life and death, if you were immortal, what, what would that mean? If you went to a different planet where you could start again from nothing, what would that mean? What would the choices, what, would, what choices would you make? You know, there, there's something about that territory. That I don't think you get that in you know, CSI Miami. You, know, you may get a bunch of fans of the show, but, but it's not, it's just not the same Quest. You want to be here. I think that's the difference. You want to be here. And not, I think that's not, true. I mean, David, he, David wants we to be get here. people who really tell us what they were thinking or yeah. what they thought when they first saw that they were uh, fans. I mean, it, I think it's very perfunctory in some fandoms. Um, it's your turn and then Vonda. Okay. I, I haven't forgotten. I was just going to say the umbrella of this is not just like you sharing Eden with us. Sharing, I remember baby pictures. It must have been at Reunion Con in LA. Mm -hmm. Sharing baby pictures, all the way to sh sharing, helping fellow fans through the hurricane, Hurricane Katrina, helping people go through horrible divorces, mm -hmm. babies being born, and all of us being there to help one another in whatever ways we could, sometimes financially. And it, it grew out of that, that your generosity became everybody's generosity. I think you, you, you've raised something quite interesting, actually, about, uh, about us wanting to be here. You know, there, there's, uh, David is, uh, is genuinely interested in people and people's experience and doesn't think he has all the answers. Uh, Jim is, is a very straight shooter. He, he will tell you how he sees the world, but he's also interested in how you see the world. Uh, I'm the same. We, we're not faking that. We're interested. We don't think we have all the answers. I think there, for sure, it's, it's not uncommon that actors, writers, producers on, on shows, they, they don't really uh, 
have that high opinion of, watch, of the, the watchers of their shows sometimes. Mm -hmm. They frequently don't have that high of opinion of their own work on the show. You know, David talks a lot about how you know, it's, it, you've just got to get the product out there. That's, you know, that's the main driving force. Mm -hmm. But underneath that, he deeply, deeply cares what stories he's telling. He's not doing it just to put his kids through school. You know, that's, that's a big motivator, sure. But it's not just that, there's, there's more depth. And that's perhaps not always true of, uh, uh, of people who show up to, to fan conventions, to you know, Comic Con, you'll get all the, the, the big names will show up there, but they, they probably are not terribly interested in what you have to say. We and genuinely he, are. You took me this very seriously. It wasn't kind of tongue in cheek as some people yeah. play their characters. Yeah. You were in the character. I mean, I, I mean I, I've always been a bit uh, in, out there. I have not always been easy to work with. Uh, I have done, particularly when I was uh, in the early years of my career, I, I, I made choices that just weren't good choices and told stories that I didn't really believe had any value. Uh, they just weren't the stories that I wanted to tell. And, and, and found that I was, I was just grumpy and not fun to be around doing that. Uh, one of the tough things about being an actor is you do all your learning in public. Um, so, so there's lots of stuff that I look back at that is hard for me to watch because it, it, it's I, I see I see my struggle, uh, but but I got I got much better at, at understanding how how I what I needed how I worked and when that worked well because of Highlander because of the opportunities that that offered to to play a character over a long period of time and for that character to, at, at heart, have a philosophy and a worldview that I understood and shared and thought was significant and important, and for the show to be dealing with topics that, you know, a lot of the episodes you just, okay, you've got to fill an hour, but then we would tell big stories, big stories about the important stuff of life, and what I discovered was the deeper you go into it, the better it works and the more fulfilling and the more the more your life grows and your work mm -hmm. grows. Um, doesn't mean that I would not do shows that, that I didn't think were telling stories that uh, had the ability to change the world for the better, mm -hmm. but I, I would do those knowing why I was doing them and understanding what that, that show had to offer that was, that was different, that was distinct, and, you know. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Mythos was, was, a, a big, was a big change for me because I, I lived with him for, for a long time and he, he taught me lots of stuff and he stood just there and laughed at me and, <laughs> and kind of nudged me now and then and, I never actually heard him speak. I didn't get. I didn't hear the voices. <laughs> <laughs> but he. But I knew he was there, and I knew. I knew what he was telling me. I knew how he was guiding me. And I've only had that experience a couple of times, and and they've been since playing that character. But that's. I mean, that you want. Man, that's what you want the job to be about. You want it to be moments of, of transcendence is such a wanky word, but, but, but you know, moments where you are not in control of what happens next. I mean, that's, that's the really scary territory and the really most interesting territory in acting or any other art, music or painting, where you are at the limits of your technical capability and then off the edge of knowing what happens next. Because those, those are the edges where the really interesting stuff happens. And I think it often helps people watching it take risks themselves. 
Londas were waiting okay. really patiently. I just wanted to say, when we were talking about the community here, before I became, like, after like Peter Wingfield fan, because I wasn't to the fan club, I was through something else online, um, I was, I'm, I'm a big sports fan, so one of the things that I'm well known for is costuming bears. And my, men my mentor for costuming bears is somebody that I'm not at liberty to mention, but he, he, he was a person in sports and I used to do things for the Los Angeles Children's Hospital for him. And when I stepped out, my friend Connie said, oh, you, you, you should um, costume a bear for this guy, the, that guy that's on Highlander that you like, mm -hmm. and you were doing something. And I, I think it was for MS at that time, so it was uh, quite a while. But like starting to do that and, and sticking out and doing that for me, it was, it was like a big thing, and um, I ended up like in, kind of like enjoying that more, like what I was doing to this fan club and the people that I was meeting because I had more of a connection with them for that. And the, my breakup with my, I'm still, we're still in contact with them, we're still like friends, but I mean, I said, you know, I want to do this instead of that, especially with Tony came out and it was like, yeah, this, this is something I should really get on board with. But, and then some of the people that I met to my friend Connie was like, we had a friend that everything that you had done before Highlander, I don't know how she had it, she had it on, she had it on, um, on VHS, and we, we would just get together, Alan Lewis and things like wow. that that you had done. Yeah, we were like, it's well, and it's awesome. Like, there's people in this room that I either met on a cruise and I met online, so I'm just so great friends with them. It is, it's, it is awesome. And, and, and again, you, you hit on something really key there, where you feel safe to offer something. You know, that you say, I, I have this, and I feel like it's a need, and I, I want to do it, and, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, and everyone's response is supportive. That's, that's powerful. Um, of all these conventions that you've been a part of, in life, yes, sometimes I have seen some very cool and was there anything that you received uh, that meant a lot to you, or um, that maybe a, or a story you heard uh, personally from a fan that was either inspired by you or the show? I, I, one of the things that has come out of conventions, uh, talking about Project Eden, um, UNICEF uh, sent a uh, kind of a, a, a recognition of the work that that they were able to do because of donations that we had made and, and that for me was tremendously meaningful uh, because that's that is about about us as a group doing something that makes a big difference and the acknowledgement coming back and, and that that was uh, I, I can't remember whether it says PWFC on it yeah yeah that and this, that was... That, that for me was, was unquestionably... Yeah, so we, we, we were one of the, one of the biggest donors that year. That's, that's big stuff. I mean, for, one of one of the reasons that we, uh, that Karen and I, uh, kind of were looking for something that we could, uh, when when we knew we had a kid coming, um, we we thought we're going to get people are going to send us teddy bears and blankets and, and because because you guys are so generous we knew stuff was going to come that we didn't need and our child didn't need but that there were kids all over the world that really could be so we were looking for something that uh, that had that 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 way of channeling that generosity and and it sort of it grew out of that over over a long period of time, where that, you know, we, we were able to to kind of take what what was what you wanted to offer and channel it in a way that that was very positive. I mean, I think that's that's a, a beautiful position to be in. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Should we go ahead and do a few more slides and down memory lane? Mm -hmm. the time Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Rocky Horror. Cards are solid. I put on a performance. They were dancing to it. Rocky Horror. Mm -hmm. It was John Mosby. That was when they brought in the company who was doing Rocky Horror. Right. Mosby, we're doing the. Uh, <laughs> Do the time. Just the time warping. A step to the left. <laughs> Put your right leg in and your right foot out. This was an insane <laughs> That was really that's what it's all I think about. that's walkabout. Yeah. We have to walk about. So we, this brings us, this is now February 2004. And now we're soon we're getting to astronauts. Orlando. Orlando, this one's Orlando <laughs> which is when you got to see the astronauts. Yeah. Yeah. Which is May. And that's sure. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loved the Carolyn. Yes. Did we, did we auction that show? No, uh, we couldn't find no, it. No, that's what I thought. I think Carolyn burned that show. This was Stargate. Yeah. In England. Right. I mean, I've, I've done a couple of non-Highlander conventions, <laughs> just not the same. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes we show up. <coughs> yes, indeed. And they think we're weird. There's yeah. no question, it's a different vibe. Yeah. 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 Very different. Do you feel more relaxed here? In, in, in the, when you come to our cons. And start oh. Well, I mean, do yeah. you just feel more relaxed when you come? It's not such a big stress, oh my God, what am I going to do when I get there, etc. Yeah, of course, because I mean, I'm sitting down chatting with friends. Yeah, no, and, <laughs> and we've and, been wearing and the, <laughs> and the, the smaller cons are, are much more relaxing. You know, the, the big ones, you just, you're being shifted around from, from one panel to another and, and all these back corridors of hotels. And, and the, the, there is an excitement to that and the, there's, there's a coolness to that. But it's, it, you never really engage in the same way because everything, everything has to be dovetailed in and so you're, you're on deadlines all the time. Yeah. And this is Vancouver. This is our first. This is our first friendship con for the PWFC, where we took a bus trip to, to, to Highlander uh, places filmed in Highlander, except that many of them weren't. We put the list together, and the bus driver couldn't find any of them, even the right ones. This is the warehouse we went to that was never used filming. But we had a lot of fun. They were all turned and made the best of it. Yeah, exactly. It was so silly. You'd think we were drinking, but I don't think we were on the bus. <laughs> something about the unlikeliness that was hysterically funny. We're driving through back roads and little tiny streets. And got stuck where we had to back a bus yeah. out. Back yeah. 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 This is a little house. Yeah. Bus. It wasn't we couldn't get to the lighthouse. Those people having their yard sales trying to figure out who That's right. On the flip side of that, uh, <laughs> Eden sent me, uh, sent me a, a, a little clip of a, a TV show they're shooting in Vancouver. I don't know what the hell it was. They were filming it in a house we used to live in. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this, oh my god. <laughs> it's the outside of it. And then they went in and said, That's, That's a, and, and the people we sold it to have changed nothing at all. It's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Where'd we go? Oh, oh. Uh, Who's that guy? <laughs> Big baby. <laughs> I think we're now in Leeds for March 2006. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I have one. <laughs> 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 oh, I felt you were more mythos at that than you were huh. The chairs from the 100th episode. Yep. And this is Memphis. Yeah. This was our oh, right. trip yeah, yeah. where you came by video and yeah. Val had an amazingly good time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was the only time we got a chat to work with video. Yeah. Right. Right. We had been trying and trying and trying. 
Let's try it. And boom, there it was. And for poor Jim, no food came in less than four hours. And then, no, no, and then we had a breakthrough. He was doing the sound check, and we hadn't been able to get him dinner. And the waiters came in and heard the music and recognized him and suddenly made food materialize instantly. It was so kind of some fundamentalist Christian conference that was taking up all the food. Do you remember? It was us and the fundamentalists. Anyway, but it, it was um, a truly amazing in Memphis. It was. It was. It was a wonderful trip. Oh, six. What, when was that? What year was that? Oh, the, the fall. Of, the fall of yeah. 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 October of two thousand and six, yeah. and you were stuck with Colby. Yeah, I, I was in England. Yeah. We were sending you stuff to decorate your apartment. Yeah. Postcards. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 But all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I want to say Jim can be, as you say, he's honest, right? So he doesn't sugarcoat things. Except <laughs> the whole time as we waited for the burgers, all he kept saying, we asked him where he wanted the con, and he had chosen Memphis. And the whole time he kept saying, I chose Memphis, but I should have remembered why I left. <laughs> 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 The slippery yeah. sword. Vancouver. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so now and it's, yeah, this is October 2007. Yep. The source is closing. Source. 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 When was the source? Was that 05? Oh, 07. Oh, it came out between, before the Vancouver Convention, between the Leeds one and the Vancouver one. Yeah, it had to be filmed yeah. after, after Leeds because they were still talking about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About and it leads in it. Van they Vancouver, you guys had the panel on what went wrong so with the source. Something. You and Adrian and David, and it was you all were very grim faced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got warning as you warned us. <laughs> <laughs> we got <laughs> warned us, and then we went in groups. And I know in New York, even forewarned wasn't forewarned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we had write the script. <laughs> <laughs> Indy Lander. Indy Lander. Is that Indy Lander? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was at Indy Lander. That's, that's, that's where I, that's where I told you about 2008. my house being broken into. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they had you live streaming a live chat thing or something. I think they sprung oh, it on you at the last gosh. minute. Okay. You look a bit stunned. Yeah. 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 Vegas. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.